Good evening. Hello, everyone. Woo. Good evening. It's great for everyone to connect and meet everyone at your table. And thank you all so much for being here. Hello. Can I get your attention, please? Good evening to you all and welcome. My name is Lance Christian and I'm the Executive Director of the ALS Association of Oregon and Southwest Washington. Thank you. I happen to be where the title of director, but really all of you are the ALS Association. It's your energy and efforts that make the work possible that we do for families living with ALS. So everyone here, give yourselves a round of applause. On behalf of our board of directors, I want to welcome you tonight and share with you, because of sponsorship and the, and the seat participation, all the expenses for this event are covered tonight. And everything that you do at the silent auction and here tonight in the room will go straight to the mission. So thank you all so much. So tonight, we're going to spring into action in the fight against ALS. Now, I look around this room, and I see many, many people who I've known for years who are true champions of this cause. But I also see people who have been newly touched by ALS, and people who are in the room tonight for the first time, and maybe don't even have a lot of experience yet with ALS, trying to figure out what this is. ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. For those of you who are new, imagine one day that you reach for a glass, and your hand feels a little weak and it drops out of your hand. Imagine you're walking, and you trip, and you fall, and you can't understand why. Well, these are things that you might attribute to age. Suddenly, you notice a change in your voice. These are things that, gosh, I'm tired. But then it just doesn't get better, or it keeps happening. So you start a journey to learn what's happening with your body and understanding your health. And over time, after, for many people, after sometimes a year or more of seeing multiple doctors, they meet with a neuromuscular neurologist and they share those words, you have ALS. If you can imagine, and many of you have lived it, the weight and the heaviness and sometimes the shock and sometimes relief to know what to call it. But ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And for those of you who are new to this cause, over time, people with ALS experience progressive paralysis and may lose the ability to walk, use your hands and arms, speak, swallow, breathe. And sadly, for many of our people living with ALS, it's two to four years from diagnosis to the end of life. This disease steals the people that we love. So when faced with this overwhelming news, what happens? Back in the bad old days, people sort of were left to flounder on their own. But now, because of your support, the ALS Association is there, both with staff and community and other families dealing with this, so that people can connect with one another with this overwhelming diagnosis and not be alone. There's someone to talk to, to reason with, to get support, to try to develop an understanding of what's going to happen, and what do we need to plan to cope with this diagnosis and live as good a life as possible with ALS. The association does this through a variety of ways with services we offer people, support and guidance with a friendly face who can sit across the kitchen table, support groups and counseling supports, assistive technology that helps people communicate if ALS steals their voice or use a computer if their hand doesn't work anymore, Caregiver supports, respite care grants that give the chance for care, family caregivers to get away. In-home care assistance where professional caregivers go into people's homes and provide hands-on support. Last year, because of the support of events like this, we were able to provide over 8,000 hours of caregiving help into people's homes across all of Oregon and Southwest Washington. It goes on, medical equipment, loans of power wheelchair, bathroom equipment, 
and we sponsor five different ALS specialty care clinics across Oregon and Southwest Washington. All this is possible because of you. And our goal is to support people to be as independent as possible while they live life with ALS. And I say live meaningfully. We want people to live as full a life possible, cope with their symptoms, and build memories with the people they love. But sadly, the disease does not stop. We lose people, and new people are diagnosed. In the last several years, I'm gonna, there's many people we've lost that are very meaningful people. This is not a comprehensive list, but I think back and I think of Rashad Lentz, Joe Denman, Shane Lewis, many, many more. But I also look out in this room and I see people living with ALS and really living fully. People like Brian Epp, Tom Henningsgaard, Leslie Rainey, Pam Kofsted, Rick Baldwin, Keith Stokes, Larry Atkins, more and more and more. And those are just the people in this room. We're, every year we're serving over 400 families living with ALS across Oregon and Southwest Washington. And for you who are living in this room, as well as for all of you who've been touched by ALS, our board has a promise and commitment that we are in this fight to help people in the right now, but also to fight for a treatment and a cure for this disease. Last year, we had an amazing night at this event celebrating the Ice Bucket Challenge. It was amazing, and we, it was, we, we reveled in, in Nancy Frady's talk about inspiration. Well, because of the Ice Bucket Challenge, our board of directors, with the financial success of this event and the Ice Bucket Challenge, was able to fund a $300,000 research grant that went to Dr. Joe Beckman at Oregon State University, <laughs> where we hope to look towards a homegrown possible treatment for ALS. So look to the video screens to learn a little bit more about this. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Joe Beckman. Thank you, Joe, for being here tonight. And thank you for your lifelong dedication to finding a treatment for ALS. I can, I can share that I've been with the ALS Association for 13 years, and I'm a rookie compared to the time Joe has spent researching ALS. Joe, what has this work on ALS meant in your life? Well, it's become a real passion. We started working on the disease not because I knew anything about the disease, but it was trying to understand a basic mechanism. And you get to know a lot of people who have the disease over the years and it's really frustrating to realize that you can watch how slow your work is compared to the impact on other people's lives. But over 25 years, I'm absolutely astonished with the amount of knowledge we've gained about the disease uh, and the amount of progress that's been made, not just for what we've been doing, but across the field and the number of people that are working on the problem these days. Joe, for your research at Oregon State, what are the next steps in, in your research program? So the drug that we came across was not by happenstance. We had a pretty good idea of what the mechanism should be and why it would work. Um, so there's a company that's taking the trials, and I'm hoping that it actually starts in a few weeks in Australia for safety trials, and then we move on from there. My life right now is thinking of, oh my God, I hope it works, but if it doesn't, what went wrong and how do we solve those problems and figure out to, how to make it work right? Uh, so that's mostly what we're trying to do is figure out if it goes sideways, what do we do next? Well, Joe, I've known you for years and 
honestly, you are like a dog with a bone on this. So, so I have no doubt if anyone can figure out, it's, it's you. What does it mean to you that this community here in Oregon has stepped up to support your work? So it's really phenomenal. And um, one of the things to explain about the money that's given to the ALS Association, there's two things I think that are phenomenal about it. The first is that there actually are major things that could be done to improve the disease and the LS Association has really made tremendous strides in the past 20 years. The other thing that is that early money, seed money that the type the association provides is critical because a lot of the research we do actually is not viewed as uh, really relevant and it's very difficult to get funding. So it lets us take chances and try new things and I promise you we're gonna gamble with this money, but we're gonna place the best bets we can to figure out what the next step to do in this disease is. Thank you, ben. thank you, Joan, thank you very much. Thank you all. So I'm hyped, I'm optimistic, I feel incredibly energized that we are moving forward in the right direction. So what I appreciate from all of you is your excitement tonight for this work and for our association and all that we do together. So thank you all and bid often and high. Okay, we're gonna get started, resume again. We hope you had some time to either meet the people at your table or to get yourself reacquainted. I would now like to introduce the lady who's gonna be joining me for the third year with this event. Valerie Hurst, anchor reporter from KATU here in Portland. Please give her a nice, warm welcome, a round of applause. You see her in the mornings on Channel 2. Those of you who have been here before know of Valerie's love for this organization and this event because of a direct connection that she has. Her father, Chuck, is living with ALS back on the other side of the country. So first of all, quick update. Thanks, How Maria. is he doing? He's doing great. I love this picture of, of me and my dad. Thanks, Aubrey, for putting that up. Um, <laughs> it helps my dad to feel involved tonight because he really does wish that he could be here with us. So, um, so thank you so much, everyone, for having me for a third year. It's really thrilling to be here with you. Uh, and, and my dad's doing, you know, OK. Uh, his doctors uh, just told him last month that technically he's been living with ALS for 10 years. So that's something to celebrate. Um, we're delighted to have you back. Thank you so, very much. Okay. We're going to, we, we, we need to pick up the energy here. Do we have any organ ducks in the house? <laughs> Do we? Do we? Nice. Do we have any beavers in the house? Wow, nice. I saw hands go up. Normally, at this hour on a Saturday night, beavers can't raise their arms, so that's a good sign already. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the one time all night I'm going to ask for everyone's attention and for everyone to please be quiet. If you have a discussion that you need to continue, or for any reason, if we could ask you to kindly step out into the hallway, Otherwise, if we could stop all conversations for a moment, this is important for ALS and for the evening, okay? Thank you very much, everyone. Right now, we would like to introduce you to a very special family, to a very special lady. We would like you to meet and hear the story of Pam Kofstad. Please direct your attention to the screens. Please help me in welcoming the Kofstad family.
Just like in the pictures you saw in that video, Pam is surrounded by her family. It's just so wonderful to see everyone here tonight. <laughs> Pam and Harvey and everybody, we just want to thank you so much for sharing your story with us tonight because it really takes a lot of courage to put yourselves in the spotlight so that the rest of us can experience this and learn more about what it's like to live with ALS for everyone involved. So thank you so much. Um, Kelly, Kelly is Pam and Harvey's daughter who lives in Spokane. Oh, I'm gonna give you your own mic, Kelly. Uh, you can, <laughs> and, uh, and Ke Kelly, like I said, you live with your, your, um, your son and your fiance in Spokane, and we wanted to uh, help, have, have you sort of help well, talk about what it's like for your family. I remember when my dad was diagnosed, it was, a uh, shock. Uh, for a while, I, I couldn't even really quite say it out loud. You know, it was just so hard to digest. But do you think over time it's, it's uh, brought your family closer together? Like, how would you describe it? I think we've always been close as a family. Um, we have seen a lot of the role changes, you know, since the diagnosis and um, just kind of strengthening the team uh, that we have to make everything function. <laughs> um, but yeah, mostly what we've learned is just, like mom said, just to keep everything positive. Um, yeah. You're doing a great job, Kelly. <laughs> this is not easy. And I know that you all get a, a lot of support, your mom in particular, support from the ALS Association, if you don't mind. I wanted to mention what a couple of them are. Programs like the Medical Equipment Loan Closet, Respite Care Program, some communication support, care from Providence ALS Center. Uh, you guys went to the ALS Family Day at the zoo. Yeah. Uh, uh, living in Spokane, what does it mean to you to know that these resources are available and that your family's so well taken care of? Just every time that I get to, you know, I touch base with mom daily um, and dad and just knowing that all those resources are there from the association, they are just, It means a lot. So we take your time. Uh, you and your family have chosen to be active in the fight against ALS by doing the walk, mm -hmm. uh, and was it the, the skiing, or the ride to defeat ALS ride. and the walk? Yeah. So in your own words, why is it important for everyone to take action? I think initially it was difficult for us to accept the diagnosis, and a lot of us had, were kind of in a state of denial um, at that time that the first ride came along. And just gearing up for that, and getting there and it was just seeing everybody pulled together and getting to talk to people that were in their spot in the, in the long process and journey that AL, ALS brings us through and um, just getting to actually communicate that and talk to people that have been through that was amazing. So, yeah. Uh, and for your mom and for all those living in uh, Oregon, Southwest Washington, why do you feel it's important tonight especially tonight, for everyone here to donate what they can to help with, with the ALS Association. This, um, you know, I first became aware of this ALS during the Ice Bucket Challenge, um, where I nominated mom <laughs> to <laughs> dump ice over her head before we even knew what was actually going on. Um, and just the resources that this association provides for my family. I, I can't describe how thankful we are. <laughs> Kelly, Pam, Harvey, thank you so much, everyone, for coming and doing this tonight. It's so wonderful to have you. Thank you. I'll take this. Thank you, Val, and thank you to the Kofstads.